Hey guys! Hello mate! You're in the cut with Slider Cuts and today I am taking you through a home self haircut. Yes, that's right, a home self haircut so that you guys which are on lockdown, even if you're not on lockdown, you just feel like giving yourself a haircut or somebody else. Follow this tutorial and this will help you for the basics of how to do a haircut on yourself. So, let's get straight into it. But before we go guys, please don't forget to subscribe. And if this video is helpful for anyone, then like, leave a comment and share it with someone. But let's get straight into it now. And it's flat across. Now, this tutorial guys, um, I'm not able to do the back because I wasn't able to get my big mirror in. And to do the back of your hair, you need two mirrors. And it's awkward. There's a mirror in my bathroom, but it's awkward because there's not enough space to get the camera in there in a standstill. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do the sides, the top, the shape up, but yeah, little disclaimer. The haircut I'm giving myself today will be a temple fade. For those who don't know what a temple fade is, is when it fades from the temple down. Some people call it a high taper. I don't think it's a high taper because, you know, essentially what a taper means is bringing in the edges. So a taper is down here, high taper, temple, whatever you call it, as long as it comes out looking good. You know, it's been about three, four months since I've combed my hair. And today I'm gonna comb it out. I feel like I don't wanna comb it out. Wow, what am I doing? <laughs> today I'm gonna comb it out. <laughs> oh, it's been about three, four, maybe even more than that, maybe four months since I've combed my hair. Oh wow, it feels like when my mom used to comb my hair. Oh my goodness, I used to be I'm like, ah! My mum used to be like, if you don't comb your hair properly, I'll do it. And when, when my mum said that, we'd be like, let's comb it ourselves, because my mum did not care. Wow, it's been a while. All right, let's get into the cut. Ah! Woo! Woo! I am You're in no pain! I am in severe pain! Fabulous gold clipper. I'm gonna put my first line in there, in the side, where I'm gonna start my fade from. And the other side. Yeah, looking alright. Just started anyway. Doing a temple fade is similar or exactly the same as doing a skin fade except for you're only gonna do it on this area. So even if you wanna do a skin fade all around, take these same techniques that I'm telling you in this tutorial and use it just all around. Although I will only be using it here. So with a skin fade, temple fade, you put the skin line there. Now you're gonna take your clipper and you're gonna open up the lever. Make sure the clip is, make sure the lever is open, yes? Closed is at the, when it goes up to the top. Open is when it's down at the bottom. Top of the clipper, bottom of the clipper. I'm being very precise because the reason why I need to be like stress it to you guys is because if you have this lever closed and then you go to create your barrier, you just put another skin line there and now you're gonna bring your fade all the way up here. So I need to stress it to you, make sure the lever is open, which is at the bottom. I'm gonna create a barrier. Ooh, straight away I think I brought that a little bit higher than I'd like, but that's all right. I think it's important to be honest, like when you do something you don't want to do, I think it's very important just to be honest about it. Instead of being like, oh, I meant to do it. No, I brought it a little bit higher than I wanted to, but that is fine, because it's fine. Same thing on the other side. With a temple fade, I think it's important that the same line you put there for the skin line, it's important that you follow the barrier line in a similar direction. And that's why here, I've had to kind of like bring it up here to make sure that the lines are to some degree parallel. Not perfectly parallel, but just to some degree parallel. This line's coming down like that, this line's coming down like that. Same thing on the other side. 
line there, line there. Now what I'm gonna do is instead of doing both sides and just you know boring you saying one side, next side, one side, I'm just gonna commentate through one side and the other side I'll just record it so just speed through it because I've just told you how to do one side. It's the same thing on both sides anyway. If this pops up sometimes, just know that's where my mirror is. And also this is the reason why I'm not combing and cutting at the same time. Now with the fade, what you're gonna do is to fade it is I had it as an open blade, fully open. What I'm gonna to do to fade out this line is, I'm going to close this a little bit, so it's not fully closed, and I'm gonna take this line, from, come from underneath the line, and go close to the line I'd created before. Because the whole point is, in, in a fade, is like steps. So, in this fade, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, fade out this line, but what I need to do first is, Drop down the level a little bit, reduce the hair, drop down the level a little bit lower, reduce more hair, and gradually fade it out. But just like a staircase, which is the analogy I always use is, if you wanna create a fade, you need to make sure that gradually it fades out. So, just like a staircase, if you have got five steps and you wanna get down to the bottom step in a gradual manner, you wouldn't jump from step five down to zero, would you? What you do is you go from step five to step four, to step three, to step two, to step one. But what you're doing every time you drop down a step, you're dropping down a number. And it's exactly the same thing when it comes to barbering, when you're fading. So up here, I had it fully open blade, right? Took it all down. But now, like the, step, like the staircase analogy, I have to come down a little bit lower. So where I was up there, I need to come down to there now and reduce the, the level. Then come down to there, then reduce the level. Then come down to there and then reduce the level. And then what you do is you create a fade because what happens is, this is like as example level five, then level four, then level three, level two, level one, level zero, and gradually it fades out. So it's important that when you're fading, you're always, when you're dropping the gauge, you're coming down a little bit lower. I hope this makes sense. I know sometimes people say that my tutorials have a lot of talking, but I think it's important for people to understand the theory behind what you're doing, and then it makes it a lot easier for you to do. Reduce the gauge, reduce the gauge, the open blade a little bit. And now I'm not going up to the line which I started with, just, just underneath it. Then, reduce it a little bit more. And now I'm coming a little bit lower. Then, reduce it a little bit more. And now I'm coming from underneath the line and look where I'm at now. Let me go closer so you guys can see. Look where I'm at now, guys. I'm just coming from underneath the line, through the line and just flick out. And then I'm gonna reduce it to the last piece, which means it's just above closed. And literally I'm just touching that line. From underneath the line, let me get close so you guys can see. From underneath the line, and just come to it and touch and come out. And there you have a basic fade. So I've just gradually just faded it out. So, onto this part now. Before I start going up, you know, fading up. I want to reduce this hair and just flatten it. Because sometimes you can, I can go fading up, but it would save a lot more time if I just flatten this hair as low as possible, just flattening it down and then fading it. I'm just following the direction the hair is growing in. Just reducing the hair. Then I'm gonna take a number one and reduce it. Using my left hand as well. Proud of myself. And just so you know, this is an open one. This technique of like flattening your hair only works on Afro hair. If you're doing European hair, Asian hair, then you wouldn't flatten the hair first because you shouldn't be cutting with the grain when it comes to European hair or Asian hair. So this technique only works on Afro hair. The fading part of it when you're going up works on any type of hair, but flattening it first, only Afro hair. Now I'm gonna close the lever, which makes it 
اللواء Alright, I flatten it enough, cool. Next part, now I'm gonna start fading it up. Now what's important at this part is to make sure that you have created an invisible line. What's an invisible line? Some of you are asking. Well, an invisible line is a line that you create to say, I'm not going to go any higher than that. Because if you don't create that line, no matter how young you are in the game, how old you are in the game, you can make mistakes by going too high. So, my invisible line would be like here as an example meaning that I don't want to fade up anything higher than that because if I fade higher than that then the fade's going to be up here I could start looking like I got a Mohican and having a haircut I don't want so it's important create your invisible line if you're a beginner and you can't like visualize it then take the comb and put like a dent in the hair so you it's a reminder don't go higher than that close one and a half come from underneath that line there and flick out. It's important to flick out. The flick out is really important that when you come to where you want to stop, you flick it out. And you don't want to keep going to where you want to stop and stopping. Because what you do is, if you keep going, stop, 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 then what you do is you end up creating another line. Because you're trying to do a fade, it's important that you go through and flick out. Flick out, 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 flick out. You get it? You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. The purpose of what I'm going to do now is, so this is our open blade by itself, so I want this fade to meet the open blade. So I'm fading it down from, let's go with one and a half against the grain, one and a half down to a open blade. So gradually, like the steps, I'm going down in the steps till I get to the open blade level, which is, it hasn't even got a level, it's hard to explain, and I'll do that in another video, but just yeah, the steps down, open blade is, underneath the 0.5 gauge. So yeah, like the steps, if you're going from five, it'll be five, four, three, two, one. So imagine this is one or zero, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If it here is five, I'm gonna go from level five, I'm gonna drop down a little bit, four, drop down a little bit, three, drop down a little bit, two, drop down a little bit, one, and I'm gonna meet there, and that's how you're gonna create a fade. Basically, the difference between closed and open is, open leaves a little bit of hair, close leaves zero. Like if it's open with no gauge on it, it's a little bit of hair, that's like stubble level. Close is zero, it takes off everything to skin. So when you put it, on, put it on any gauge, or put any gauge on top of it, number one, close, take off some hair, but it'll take it to the lowest it can at, not at a number one. Open number one, will take it to a number one, but it'll take it to a bit slightly higher than a closed. So. The levels are marginal, but it makes a difference. So when it's closed to when it's open, it's a different level. So you'll hear me say open, then closed. Open, then closed, because I'm gradually going down. So like, I might say a number two, open. Cool, taking it all down. Now I'm using a number two, closed. Then I might say a one and a half, open. One and a half, closed. Number one, open. Number one, closed, and so on. So open is the higher level, closed, is the lower level and it works on any gauge. So comb out, keep combing out. And what I always do is I always in between of fading just flatten down the hair. So I've used the one and a half going against the grain, flicked it out. I take the number one, close number one, and I just flatten it before I go up with it. Coming from underneath that line guys, same as I did before, underneath that line, go through, come out, flick out. And it's important to remember where I was going to last time when I was using the one and a half, I got to make sure now I'm coming slightly lower than that. Comb out, gonna close it now, close number one. From through, make sure you come from underneath that line, go through it and flick out. Flick out, flick out, flick out. And it's important to comb it out as well. When you're fading, go directly opposite the direction the hair is growing in. So when you're combing it out, you can see it. So if it's growing this way, then when I'm flattening it, I go that way. But then when I'm going against it, I make sure that I'm going that way. Yeah, that's cool. Now, to a gauge that I don't actually really use, but for the purpose of this tutorial, especially for beginners, I'm going to use it, but 
If you watch my Instagram, go follow my Instagram, Slider Cuts, and you see my Insta stories, you'll generally see that I generally never use the one and a half, sorry, the 0.5 gauge, and people always ask me, why don't I? But I come from an era where we never had this 0.5 gauge. This is probably about six years old. When I started, we never had it, so we had to go from number one to just the open blade. So that's the reason why. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm using it. So, 0.5 gauge, same thing. And I always do, I flatten it. Light, close it. Now here's something to know about the 0.5 gauge, especially you, you beginner barbers. The 0.5 gauge is very flimsy. The bristles are very soft, they're very thin. So they break easy. So it's important when you close your clipper, close, it's closed right now, open it a little bit. Because it's so thin and flimsy, they always break because when it's at zero, it keeps scratching against it. And that's why they break. So if, you, if it happens to you all the time, that's the reason why. When you go to zero, open it a little bit and always use it like that. Or else it's gonna be scraping against it and weakening it and it breaks quickly. Gone down on it. Then, same thing. Comb out, check where the line is. I need to look at the mirror right now. Here's the thing, it's basically faded. It's basically already, the lines are basically already gone. But where the line is there, where I can see it kind of a little bit, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come from underneath it and just flick out. So the whole point right now is I'm not even like going through, ooh, I'm just literally underneath the line and I'm flicking out straight away, flicking through the line. I'm gonna close it a little bit now and I'm just gonna flick through the line. So basically what I'm doing is, here's the line, and instead of me going like, and going through doing that, what I'm doing from underneath the line instead is I'm just going and flicking out. Come from underneath the line, and as I hit the line, flick out, flick out. Because what I'm doing now is I'm flicking out that line now. I think there we have it, faded on one side. Yeah, there we have it. Now there's more that can be done to it. So if you look at it, there's like a little dark piece of hair there. It looks like it could be faded smoother there. And there's a little kind of like not blended as much there. But I always say that when you're cutting hair, cutting your own hair, cutting someone else's hair, it's important to not focus too much time and attention on one area, but move on and come back later. It's a lot easier to deal with because from my experience and everyone who cuts hair knows this, when you spend so much time perfecting one area, then you move on to the next area, like there, it's heartbreaking and it becomes difficult. And you feel like, oh, I've used all my mental and physical energy on that area. I can't actually do it on the next area. So it's good just to move on and then come back. And when you come back, you've got like a breath of, it's like, you've got new life basically. And it's like, oh, easy, quickly, flip that out, flip that out, go over that, it's quick. So you do that at the end. But I might do it for you right now, just so you can see what refining is. Just so you get the idea. So pretend like I've finished the haircut and I've done everything else now, and I've come back to here, and I'm like, okay, so refining is comb out, brush out the hair, and just about looking at it and saying, okay, what is wrong with it? Just say to yourself, what's wrong with the haircut? What could be improved? And straight away, I say, okay, there's a little dark patch there. So it's like, okay, let me lighten up that patch. Now the thing you don't do is you don't, Say, okay, well, I use the number one there, so I'm just gonna use the number one there again. The purpose of refining is to better the haircut. You've got to kind of like follow the rules of the haircuts to create the fade, but then when you come back to refine, you throw all of those rules out the window, and now it's the time to just make the haircut look good. So even if it means the open blade by itself you're gonna use on this area, which I'm gonna use right now, just to make it look lighter, so it looks cleaner, then do that. It looks cleaner, can you see what I'm saying? So it's not about being like, well, I used the number two there, I used the number three there, whatever, it doesn't matter, just that you can see a, a problem there, it looks darker. So use the number one, use the number two, use the number three, whatever it is. But what I will say for beginners especially, whatever level you think you should use, go up two levels and then come down gradually. Because you might think you need to use a zero. And then it's like, whoa, you should have used the number one. So go, I always tell my junior barbers this and beginner barbers, go up two levels. And sometimes they're like, oh, I've gone up way too high. I said, that doesn't matter. 
because it's better to be cautious than to be overzealous and jump the gun and put a patch in someone's head. So be cautious and then with experience, you'll start getting it. So yeah, so refining just this, I see that and like, okay, cool. So now I figured out that part. I'm like, okay, I look at dark back here. It's like, cool, go over, flick over that area. And then I'm looking at this top part where I'm like, this could be smoother here. So literally, I'm just gonna take the one and a half and I'm just gonna run over this area like I did before. And just run over it and just like smoothing it. And if it's like, okay, nothing's coming off, nothing's happening, not even touching it, I drop down, open one. And literally on that area there, I'm gonna use my left hand so that you guys can um, see it more clearly. I'm just going to run over it, just to make it look smoother. Can you see that it's now starting to look smoother? And now I'm not even doing that much. All I'm doing is I'm brushing over it with a similar gauge I used actually, because I just thought it looked a bit, you could say ripply, like it could be smoother. So it's like, let me just skim it a little bit to cut some hair off it a little bit to make it look smoother. I don't need to cut chunks out of it. You know, I've already done the fade. Yeah, and basically that's done. Now obviously I haven't faded any of this because as I said, that's the back and um, I haven't got two mirrors. But yeah, there is a temple fade slash skin fade. In the steel of the night <laughs> God have mercy upon us <laughs> And I love Alright cool 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 guys 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 Right people are just switching off Alright cool no more singing Uh it's about damn time It's about damn time Yeah. Now, maybe into the shaping of the hair. Or should I just go straight to the shape up? Let's go to the shape up. Shape up time, guys. Shape up time. Now, I always do this. So, whenever I cut, most people I cut anyway, and myself, I always reduce the front of the hair down. So, I'm going to have it with number one first. No, I'm lying. One and a half. I'll tell you this, it's been a while since I've had a haircut and my wife doesn't know, she's just gone out. She doesn't know I'm cutting my hair so she's definitely gonna be happy when she sees me. Open one now, on the edge. Literally just to flatten it down, can you see it? Should I use the Andis Slimline Pro? The Babyliss Gold FX Skeleton? Or should I use the Wall Detailer? Excuse me if I pronounce this wrong. The Gold FX. Skeleton, yeah, the Babylon's Gold FX Skeleton. Which one should I use? Did I hear you guys say the Babylon's Gold FX? The gold got to you, didn't it? So, as I always say, start off on the edge, you can start refining it and making it sharp as you go along, but when you just go into the shape up initially, just start off on the edge. I will not be starting off as light as I would tell, as I'll tell beginners, but if you're intermediate, you can do this. Or maybe I will, let's see how, how I feel. So yeah, let's start off with like a beginner's shape up. So beginner's shape up is, is like this. Keep it right on the edge. Whatever's there, you just touch it. This is what I tell beginners to do. That is a beginner shape up.
Now the reason why I tell beginners to do this is because when you create a structure, a shape, as minimal as it is, it makes it a lot easier to look at the hair now and say, what do I need to do? But as a beginner, I'd say leave it there. If you're intermediate, then I might take it further than this now. And now look at it and say, okay, cool. So now I can see the hairline because I've shaped up a little bit. Now I can say, okay, this side is a lot higher or lower than the other side. So I'm gonna even it up as long as the client wants that. Because some clients are like, you know what? I don't even care. Leave it exactly where it is. I'm not one of those clients. You know, straighten it up. So yeah, and that's what the good thing is about just lightly shaping it on your first round, like round number one, because it gives you something to follow. And then you can look at it and so be like, okay, cool, mm, can sharpen it up, can sharpen it up, whatever, okay, I need to go in there, and whatever it is. Round two, fight! Also, I said this in another tutorial the other day, when you're doing a shape up, wherever you started the line, so I start the line here, make sure you follow that line up. Because I've seen like beginner barbers especially do this thing where they do this. They're on this line here, and then suddenly they come up here, and they're in front. And it's like, well, if you started there, why are you now shaping up there? Like follow the line that you started off with, because you're creating a straight line. What you want to see is, boom, boom. You're not gonna get that by shaping up here, then here, then there, then there. No, that's gonna be jagged. So, wherever you start up the line, follow the line straight. You gonna learn today. So I started down here. Now I'm gonna go up, following the line that I started with. Can you see, you see what I'm saying? I followed that line, and that's how I created a neat line. Then from here, See what I'm saying? From here, I just followed the line that I started off with. You guys getting it? So yeah, this is round two guys. You just you made it a bit neat and now you've created actually a shape. And now it's kind of like, okay, this is now a shape up. Now round three is for you, know, you intermediates, you advanced barbers, where I'm like, well, now look it and say, what can I do to make that shape up crispy? You know, how can I make it sharper? How can I make it cleaner? How can I make it straighter? And this is where you come to round Three. So first of all, and here's a technique to use guys, without having to go with a clipper straight away, use your finger, look in the mirror, and say, okay, ooh, that'll be too high if I've done that. But if I do that, or is it there? Oh no, that's too high. No, is it there? And basically you can pull up parts of your hair to um, establish where the issue is and what you need to do. Um, and I'm not saying you need to make your hairline perfect and like, you know, be there for the next 10 hours trying to make it perfect, because no one's hairline will ever be Perfect, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can get close to it. Now, no talking, I'm just gonna get into the third round of shaping myself up. Let's see how it's gonna look when I finish this round. I did forget to tell you guys something which I always tell people and I forgot to say it and I feel bad. When I'm shaping up people I always say, try and pull away from the hairline. So, when you're shaping up, so even if you're, in a pushing thing, push away from the hairline and said, come down, away from the hairline. At the top line, away from the hairline, away from the hairline, away from the hairline. Here, push away from the hairline. Basically, the whole idea is to cut and pull away from the hairline. So always try and go away from the hairline. You can do this and come and meet the hairline, but, it's not even but, I just feel like, as a beginner, just go with that technique. Pull away from the hairline.
How's it looking? Now I can keep going over this, right? To make this better, to be honest. I can make this even better, but I think it's important as well to know when enough is enough and when is it needed and when it's not. For me right now, I'm only giving a haircut for the sake of giving a haircut, giving myself a haircut. So I don't want to overdo it, especially for no reason and then mess it up. Cause there's a point you need to get to when you just know to say enough is enough, stop. Don't overdo it, cause then you end up making mistakes. And this is just real barbering. You know, I've, done, I've got different tutorials up um, and this one is just like, know when to say stop. Now, saying stop might be on round one for you. Saying stop might be on round two for you. Saying stop might be on round three when you're just getting a little over particular. Cause you, yeah. And yeah, I'ma leave it like that guys. I'ma leave it like that. And it's flat, I can't.